I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of in love with this color palette. Sherwin-Williams came through for us again with some lovely color selections for 2022. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with their color of the year, Evergreen Fog, which we've spoken about on this channel. And if you haven't seen our review on it, I'll leave it in the cards up top. But in addition to that, their annual color mix forecast gives us some really fun combinations of colors that all have a central theme. Today we're looking at the Dreamland palette, which other than its awesome name, has some pretty amazing colors all curated together. The company describes this palette as a collection of sweetly spirited greens, pinks, and cool neutrals. Some influences are biomimicry, pretty cool, <laughs> renewal, eco-style, and wellness. I sort of see this as a neo-bohemian palette where there's a lot of color and they may have the essence of mother nature, but this mother is amped up and ready to go. So we're going to quickly go through the nine colors in the palette so you can get an idea of just how awesome it is. Starting things off, we have the brightest color in terms of light reflectance value. And I believe it's actually the whitest white that Sherwin-Williams makes. At least I would assume so from the name, high reflective white. This is a no brainer if you want the lightest and brightest. To me, it's the Sherwin-Williams answer to Benjamin Moore's Chantilly Lace. They're both stark and vibrant, yet they also seem to have just the slightest hint of warmth to soften them without making them feel creamy or yellow. It's just bright and vibrant and a really good baseline to start things off with. Moving on to the true neutral of the palette, and that's natural linen. This is a color that I quite like, so much that we recently did a review on it on Color Code, but it's just one of those soft beige paint colors that sits around that mid 60s LRV. When your colors live around there, they don't really run the risk of feeling too light in your well-lit areas or too dark in your not so well at areas. It's reflecting more than half of the light that hits it. So it'll keep your space feeling warm and open. And it's also the safest color in this palette that you can implement right away as the foundation for everything that's to come. Next up we have Rose Tan, which is a lush clay color that is darker than it appears with an LRV of 38. Because it does have a lot of that noticeable warmth in the form of orange mainly, I feel that you can get away with going a bit darker as a color because the color will still maintain a lot of its visual saturation and color hue no matter how dark the room is, unless it's pitch black of course. But I guess you can get around using echolocation or something. Do bats click? I don't know. I think a great way to spice up your neutrals is to add some fiery red or orange bases to them in the forms of colors like rose tan or your more red leaning terracottas. They still seem to fit really well even though there's a lot more color in them. Now I think it's only appropriate that the next color we talk about is called rose. So we go from rose, to rose. You just gotta add that little accent aigu. Thanks, French class. While rose wine traditionally has a rosy or sometimes peachy coloration, rose, the color is more of a dusty lavender and it feels like a soft red leaning purple that has a similar value to rose tan. They're both in the 30s for LRV, so you can classify them as dark midtones or very light dark colors, but that doesn't sound nearly as good. So now you're starting to see the colors that are involved here. We're not just talking about variations of gray, but what if I told you that there's a third color in this palette that also contains the word rose, but not referring to the flower or wine, but in the herb, rosemary. My fiance hates when I say herb. It's pronounced herb. Now this is a green that I'm into, absolutely beautiful aromatic green that has a light reflectance value of 14. So it's dark, but not quite dark enough where you would mistake it for black if you looked at it quickly. It's green through and through, and it's definitely a phenomenal accent choice within this palette if your aesthetic is a little more grounded and earthy. Phenomenal kitchen cabinet color as well. In fact, it's a great alternative to navy blue if you wanted to change things up. There's two other colors in this collection that contain green. The first one being Kukutsa Verde, hopefully I pronounced that right. And this is almost reminiscent of a bottle of 
green Tabasco sauce. Maybe a guacamole feel. Something to do with food, because I love food. It's a green that is livened up with a bit of a yellow undertone, and it's more forward in its vibrancy than rosemary, for example. You can tell they're both green, but this one just jumps out a bit more. And on the flip side, you have felted wool, which is much more muted in its green undertone, and it's very much an undertone in this case, because the more predominant color hue here is an undersaturated brown, or taupe coloration. Really, it just seems to be more of a dark gray mixed with brown, and then you add that green undertone in, which allows it to work with the other greens, but also complement the bolder colors in the collection too. Before we get to the most dynamic and fun color of them all, let's touch on another subtle color that is pretty elegant in my eyes. It's called Light Lavender, spelt L-I-T-E, just for fun, I guess. And don't let its 71 LRV fool you because this one does feel quite light in its practical use and only has a subtle amount of purple in its undertones despite its name. It's settled down with gray, so it won't feel childish when you use it in larger areas of your home, but also doesn't have any strong competing undertones that make it look anything but a light tone of purple. It's a really interesting choice for a borderline off-white because it's not just gray, it's offering something a little bit different. Not nearly as different as Dynamo, however. With a name like that, you know you're in for a real treat. This is a color that feels juicy and energetic and frankly obnoxious, but I love it. It's a deep berry-like magenta and it also has a little bit of red to round it out. And even though this color is technically dark with an 11 LRV, it's definitely not gonna make you feel the same way that a subdued, dark charcoal gray, or even rosemary will make you feel. Those are more grounded, settled dark colors, while Dynamo over here is bouncing off the frickin' walls. <laughs> but whether it's Dynamo, or Rosé, or any other color, this is a color palette that you can incorporate in many different ways. Not just on your walls, your woodwork, or your cabinets. You can use them on your furniture, you can pick them out and implement them in fabrics or accessories, just try and be mindful of your proportions. Use that 60, 30, 10 rule whenever you can, and you'll be great. If you want some assistance on how you can put together color palettes in your home, you can check out this video right over here, and I'll definitely do what I can to help you.